friends, it's Steph with Steph's on a Budget. Welcome or welcome back for another video. Today we're gonna to be setting up my November 1st budget. So we're gonna be doing a budget with me. I am excited because this will be our first budget in our new budget binder that we just set up together. And it's just so cute and festive. I can't not smile when I look at this binder. So I am super pleased with how it worked out. And so far, I'm loving it. I do want to make a few tweaks that we kind of talked about, like finding some heavier cardstock for my monthlies, um, that sort of thing. But otherwise, it's all good so far. <laughs> so I did go ahead and add in like my payday calendar. So I am put in um, the 2024 one to wrap up the end of this year. I went ahead and printed out my 2025 one. So I have that ready to go. I did move over my 2024 goals, so that way when we wrap up December, I know where I'm at. And then I went through um, my binder from this year that we just finished up in October, and I pulled all of the currently pages that I didn't use for this year and put them in here, and I do have these three months, oddly enough. Um, well, not oddly, I don't know why I said that, but I only used two, so. <laughs> I had these recycle. Yes, the dates are gonna be funky, but that's okay. I can update them if I really want to, but really the idea is just to have kind of a note section or a brain dump for what I wanna focus on for the month. So it's not really a big deal. But we are working in November, so this is our monthly November spread. And you'll notice I did finally give up on the November tab I had <laughs> and just took it out. So there's that. I quickly threw together um, some decorative elements because I love putting my stickers in the book. So, you know, it's not the most exciting one for, for November, but we've got some fun cutesy pumpkin stickers and we are ready to go ahead and budget. So we've got our monthly spread. Um, I've had several of you guys ask if I'll be listing these in my Etsy and um, I am contemplating it. I had to do like some tweaking on my end and I would just want them to be you know, essentially perfect and ready to use for you guys. And I had to like set my printer settings a certain way to kind of get them to look like this. So let me do some tweaking. And if I'm able to kind of work out those kinks, then I'll definitely get them listed. So, you know, it would be the decorative page and then the monthly spread that we see here with the dot grid on the side. But we are here for a budget with me. So that's my little update on <laughs> the book. And we're going to set up our first November paycheck. So I think I'm going to just leave everything in the binder. So actually, let me flip back to the monthly. So we're uh, setting up the budget for November 1st, and we're going to be paying everything that's highlighted in this pinkish color. Um, you're going to see some things that are highlighted here that don't carry over into the actual budget. And the reason for that is because we do have some um, accounts of credit, like credit cards and things like that, that are still open but do not have a balance but I do leave them in my monthly spread um, you know so that I know to check those accounts at least once a month to make sure nothing has changed because we have all been there a million times where we have paid something off and then maybe some residual interest posts to it and we don't realize and then we accrue a late payment or we have some annual subscription that we completely forgot about that's tied to a credit card and um, we forget about it. So I leave those in there just to cue me to go in and check. Okay, sorry friends, a little edit there. I had to go take care of the dogs. They were whining at the door. So sorry if you were hearing that noise. Um, but that is why you might see some highlights that don't carry over into the budget. It's not that I'm ignoring or not paying. So like I said, we're looking at everything in the pink here. You'll notice that this is also a quote unquote magic month for us. So that's always really exciting. So we've got the budget mom budget paycheck tracker and we're looking at November 1 of 24. So if you're new here, my husband and I both work a full-time job. We both work in healthcare. I'm gonna do some shuffling so this is a little bit closer. Let me just check to make sure you're still in frame and you are. Um, so we are paid every two weeks, both on the same payday. So we are going to be budgeting our pay one and our pay two. So um, pay one, we are going to budget 
$3,005.24, I believe. And um, that is the actual because it's I'm filming on the first. <laughs> so once again, Stephanie just squeaking it in here. Um, so I know the actual. Now, normally I'll budget what I think we typically anticipate and then come in and put in the actual. But since we know, we'll just go ahead and put in the actual. Okay, sorry about that, friends. I had to go and check what our pay to was. And of course, that's on my phone and I'm filming. So <laughs> I had to fix all that. But for pay two, we're looking at $23.71. Um, there is some change there, but I've already forgotten it and I'm not going to worry because I don't fuss with change in my budget anyways. I always just round up. So I'm going to add our income together and we're looking at $5,376 that we're wanting to budget. So we're going to go ahead and move down to the fixed expenses and this is all of those things highlighted in pink. So first off, we have our half mortgage. So I split my mortgage up into two, two payments, basically. Well, I don't make two payments. I make one payment, but I set aside the first half of the mortgage with the first payday, and then um, I will make the payment with the second half from our second payday of the month, typically. So first half is 11.1, and that's going to be for 11.35. And I'm going to be flipping a little bit. So, okay. Next up, we have our internet. That's on the third, and that is $65. And then we have our truck payment on the fifth, and that's $10.13. Also on the fifth, we have a Chase card that we're paying off some taxes. That's $50. Okay, we are here on the gas bill. So that's for our natural gas, and that's on the 8th, and that's $50 this month. We did have to kick the heater on this morning, so we'll start to see the transition from gas increasing and hopefully the electric coming down, which speaking of electric, that's our next one on the 10th. And it is at 240. Um, it, it was just unseasonably warm, so that's still staying up there quite a bit. We also have um, a personal loan that we paid off in January this year. And so, I have been leaving that debt snowball in where I can, and that is $150. So you're probably saying if you're new here, why don't you put that in the extra debt? Well, I try to leave my debt snowballs for things that I pay off in the fixed expenses. Um, two reasons. One, it's more of a mental thing, and it just helps me to still consider it as a bill, and I'm less likely to excuse away that money into something else like spending or saving versus continuing to put it towards debt. Also, I like it to be in this section because if I leave it for here, I go through all my fixed expenses, then my variable, then my savings, and then I get to extra debt. And somewhere along the way, surely some of this money will get eaten up into other categories if I allow that to happen. So that is the main reason I leave that um, up here in this section. We're also gonna be paying our home water bill which is 206 this month. And that will start to come down as we turn the water off here as it gets cold. And then we also have our city two, which is our current debt we're working on. And that is $150. So I'm gonna just flip over and make sure I've got everything. We've got our mortgage, internet, truck, chase, gas. Yep, that looks good, okay. So another reason I like the highlight method because it just makes it so quick and easy to identify what needs to get paid. So we're gonna go ahead and add up all these expenses here together. And we're looking at $3,059 for our fixed expenses. And we're gonna take that from our income, which is going to leave us with $2,317 which will bring down here. 
which seems like a lot. So <laughs> I'll just make sure I haven't missed something. Okay, next up are our variable expenses or our cash envelopes, as most of us refer to them. So we've got groceries, Costco, gas for our vehicles. We do miscellaneous, house and beauty. Just gonna list these all out real quick. Um, we do spending money. We do water again. This is for drinking water though. We have pets and we have takeout. So for groceries, these hardly ever change, you guys. We're gonna do 300 to groceries, 200 to Costco. We're gonna put 150 towards gas, 40 into miscellaneous, 60 into house and beauty, 360 into spending, $42 for our water, $35 for our pets, and we're going to do um, $200 to take out. I have increased this to be a little bit more realistic for us. So let's add these all up. We're looking at $13.87 here. Um, and if we take that from the 2317, that leaves us with $930 to bring up to our sinking funds, um, which for us, we, we cash our, our, we stuff rather, our sinking funds using savings challenges. So we need money for our month ahead and our emergency fund. So these are two goals that we're working on. And we have an emergency fund. We are just adding a, we had a set a goal to add a thousand dollars to it this year. So that's what that's all about. I want to continue to grow that because it's not nearly where realistically it probably needs to be. Um, we have Christmas and then we do just general savings challenges, which is typically how I um, which is typically how I save for sinking funds. And then we have our debt binder. So we're going to put 33 to our month ahead and 40 into our emergency fund. Christmas is going to get 150. And I always have to kind of like add this as we go. So I've got 930 minus the 33, 40, 150. Um, we're going to do 225 into savings challenges and we're going to do 300 into our debt binder, which will leave us 182. So let me add this really quick. That's 748 total for savings. So we have $182. Um, what I think I'm going to do is, um, bring that down here to extra savings and we're just getting around the holiday season where we tend to kind of, now I don't want to like give myself the opportunity for this money to just kind of float away. Um, but realistically, I'm trying to consider spending around this time of year. There's always kind of last minute things that come up, you know, like work potlucks, um, holiday parties. Um, I know I have one for my team on the 6th, so I'll need to, you know, potentially have a gift for my boss for that. So I think just more unexpected unexpected expenses tend to come up for us around the holidays. So what I'm gonna do is just leave this in my checking buffer with the permission to utilize it for quote unquote holiday spending if it needs to be. Normally I would want, this is a, a big amount of money, and normally I would want it to have a more structured place like debt, for example. Um, but you know, overall I feel pretty good. We've got $300 going to our debt snowball. We've got um, our debt binder. We've got $150 debt snowball here, which, and then the 150 minimum payment, which is actually above the minimum payment now on our current debt. So we're throwing a big chunk at our debt. So um, 
you know, I'm not struggling with guilt or anything there, but um, I just want to be transparent on why we're leaving kind of a bigger amount unassigned, um, even though we're going to put it in our buffer. And our checking buffer, um, you know, is actually our savings account tied to our checking account, if that makes sense. So it's not like a high yield or anything like that. It doesn't earn us much interest. Um, and my account will automatically pull from this if there were to be like a shortage in my checking. And that's why I refer to it as my checking buffer. And that way it's out of my checking account um, in savings, but still within seconds of needing if it needed to be. So hopefully that makes sense. I am going on and on about this checking buffer, probably more than you wanted to know, but that's what we're going to do with that last bit of money. <laughs> and that gets us to a zero base budget, my friends, which is exactly what we're looking to have. So we are all set for November 1st and I am ready to get my bills taken care of and get my cash envelope stuffed. So thank you guys for joining me for another video. I appreciate you guys being here. Oh, also, um, I put up a November freebie, 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 Stephanie, enunciate, um, on, it's in my, it's in my Kofi account, you guys, um, but you'll find the link on my community page here on YouTube. So just, I thought it would be a fun little freebie for us to play together in the month of November. It says turkey, gravy, beans, and rolls. Let me see that casserole. So what we're going to do is roll a dice and what we roll, and you can pick whatever numbered dice you want, six, four, 10, 12, 20. <laughs> And whatever you roll, you'll you'll write it down here on the dinner roll. I thought that was super cute, but I'm gonna be um, incorporating this into some shorts videos to play along with you guys. So go grab it and save along with me. I'm super excited for November. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you again, everybody for being here, all of your support. I am um, getting all of the giveaway stuff together. So it's coming very, very soon. Hopefully in the next week is my goal, knock on wood. Um, I'm going to do my best anyways. And so stay tuned, you know, keep an eye out for my videos. Um, a giveaway will pop up in one of them here very soon, but thank you again, friends, for being here. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button to stick around and we'll see you in the next one. Bye friends.